Hey, Johnny here, and today I'm building one of the most unusual pieces that I've ever made. I'm making a table out of thousands of these sheets of copy paper, which I have to lay out one by one. And already you're probably wondering, Johnny, what would possess you to build an entire table out of individual sheets of paper? And this idea actually came from watching videos of knife makers who make their own micarta knife handles. Micarta is a composite lamination of a material, often it's canvas, but it can also be made with paper. And it's made by layering your material of choice with epoxy and then shaping that into a knife handle. You get some really amazing looks and sort of similar to wood grain. So today I'm gonna make what is a world record for the world's largest paper micarta lamination, probably, and carve a pattern into the tabletop to reveal those layers and create what should be a really unique design. After testing the copy paper and having it slip out of the mold, I bought these thousand foot rolls of craft paper thinking this would save me a ton of time and make the process easier. I was hoping I could laminate an inch and a half thick tabletop in just a day or two. And at first this seemed promising. I spent the first day laying out the first 40 layers with my camera guy, Andy. And the idea was to do these layers in chunks of 40 to 80 at a time and then add weight to the top, which I did by laying out another sheet of melamine and then placing five gallon buckets full of water on top to press it all day. That came off easy, so there's win number one right there. I'm already seeing some potential fatal flaws here. When I used the printer paper for the test, it actually came out really nice. This paper, it's got a bit of a, a shimmery, slick kind of surface and I don't think it's soaking in the epoxy the way I had hoped because I'm able to just pull these layers right apart. Honestly, I think at this point, I stop here. Let's peel this thing up and then we can kind of look at it better, maybe kind of slice it up and look at the layers and, and really make a determination that this is not the way to go. You can just pull these layers apart. That looks like shit. Now I did use mold release, but the layers were just tearing apart. It was a complete disaster. So I hit up my friends over at Total Boat headquarters to get some advice. They suggested that I try vacuum bagging. I tested this method and found that it actually worked really well, but it meant that I was back to using those individual sheets of copy paper. And after doing some quick calculations, I guess this table was gonna require at least 5,000 sheets of paper to build up the thickness that I wanted. Now the vacuum bagging process that I'm using is normally used to make composite parts out of carbon fiber or other materials. And it's done by forming the lamination over a mold that's placed inside that vacuum bag. So for my build, a piece of flat melamine is gonna be my mold. And then the paper gets stacked on top of that and I'll build the vacuum bag around that. Now I know I'm gonna need at least 200 layers of paper to make a lamination thick enough to serve as a tabletop, but it's really hard to calculate beforehand since I don't know how much the epoxy is gonna add to the thickness of the paper. Also in my test, I was using Total Boat's two to one high performance epoxy, but I realized that with its limited working time, I was only gonna be able to do a few layers before needing to get everything in the vacuum bag. So I'm gonna switch to using Total Boat thick set epoxy, which typically is for deeper pores up to an inch thick, and it's already quite thin once it's mixed. And that means that I want to add any acetone to thin it out in order to work with it. Also, the longer working time is gonna give me four to five hours, and that's what I need to do a day's worth of paper lamination before enclosing everything into the vacuum bag. This also meant it was gonna take me a long time to build up the thickness of the tabletop. I originally estimated it was gonna take four to five days, but as you'll see, this number was slightly off. For a split second, I told myself, Johnny, you don't have to do this. Just switch to a simpler project that doesn't require you to spend a week or more hunched over a table, squeegeeing epoxy onto thousands of sheets of paper with no idea if it's actually gonna work or not. But one thing about me is I kind of love doing tedious things that I know are gonna suck. I mean, you wouldn't know it by my current dad bod, but I used to run ultra marathons up to 100 miles and I did that up in the mountains. And I'm not telling you that to brag. I mean, the only running I'm doing nowadays is a quick jog to the fridge for a pint of ice cream. I'm telling you this because I want you to understand how my brain works when it comes to stuff like this. Now, I might complain the whole time, and on this build, bending over the table for hours at a time for days in a row, my back was absolutely killing me. But when I get into a groove, 
I actually love the challenge of doing something like this. And over the course of the last five years of making these videos, I've discovered that the more projects sucks for me to build, the more you viewers seem to enjoy watching me make it. And I honestly hope it's because it's interesting to watch and not because you like to see me suffer. Either way, if you're watching, I really appreciate it. And if you enjoy these videos, the number one way for you to support what I do is to get subscribed. And I wanted to take a second to thank all of you who have done so. I also have merch available if you're into wearing clothing and getting a Johnny Builds t-shirt is another great way to support this channel. So thank you to all of you who've done that. So this has had a full day to cure and just looking at what I see here, I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, it feels really solid. I did, however, get some epoxy that sucked up into the vacuum tube. That's actually to be expected somewhat. Some people, even when they do this process, they have a vacuum chamber, which then collects any epoxy that gets pulled out, and then there's tubing running to their vacuum system. I didn't do that, but luckily I have enough tubing that I can cut these uh, pieces off and I'll be fine. On the next one, I think what I'll do is I'll make the bag longer and then I can uh, put a longer strip of this, uh, it's called breather, breeder, breeder, <laughs> breather, bleeder, <laughs> bleeder, breather fabric. And it's made especially to catch uh, the excess epoxy. The next thing to do is cut the bag off, pull this thing out and actually see if this looks okay. And then I have to do the whole process over four or five more times. Now, I will admit that I'm somewhat of an environmentalist. I care about the planet. I mean, my wife and I just had a baby girl, so I wanna leave the world in as good a shape as I possibly can for her. So I figured, what better way to do my part than to take paper, which came from trees that have been cut down, and turn that paper back into usable wood by dumping gallons of epoxy on it and then squishing the whole thing together. I feel like too many folks are worried about individual plastic straws floating in the ocean, attacking baby turtles, but no one talks about how if we could turn deconstructed trees back into lumber to build timeless, lasting furniture, we could actually make a difference. And maybe down the road, I'll figure out how to take this reconstructed wood and turn it back into a tree with roots and leaves and branches to fully complete that cycle. But that's a project for another day. In between laminations, I started working on the table base and I wanted to try a new design for the legs. This design started with the idea of doing a traditional wishbone style leg, but then I wanted to put my own spin on that. So I added this ellipse to the middle with the thought that this design not only looks clean and unique, but that oval in the center is also gonna add some additional structural support for what's gonna be a pretty heavy tabletop. So I designed a scale model to cut out of my Omtech laser. This is something that I've started doing in recent builds, and it really allows me to see the scale of the design in person versus just the 3D model on a 2D computer screen. Right here, I think it looks great as is, my longtime viewers know I never second guess my design choices, so this is it. This is the final design. There's gonna be zero changes. All right, man, this thing been curing all night. Pull it out of here and see what we got. This method of vacuum bagging is essentially one shot. Like you have to replace all the materials every single time. And that's really wasteful and really expensive because this stuff is not cheap. So this is day three and I was feeling pretty good about my progress and how it's starting to look. Then I realized I don't actually know if all that paper is laminating properly. How solid will the tabletop end up being? I don't know. Are there gonna be air bubbles or voids inside that compromise the strength? And I'm hoping the end result is more like a slab of red oak than like a pinata, which a pinata is basically paper laminations with a secret inside. And now that I think about it, a pinata table might be kind of fun. Take a bat to it and all the candy falls out all over the place. Could actually go for a Snickers right now. And before you say anything i'm fully aware this is my second junk food reference get it my love of junk food is directly correlated to having said dad bod we're two pours in and we're a little less than half an inch i wanted to finish at an inch and a half so i think if we do four more laminations each lamination takes a day so i think if we do monday tuesday wednesday thursday we'll be done by friday the peel layer got wrinkled and that left a few ridges that I need to sand before I do the next pour. And I wanna take a second to shout out Total Boat, which is my longest longtime sponsor. I truly stand by their lineup of epoxy and finishes. If you're at all interested in trying out epoxy projects for yourself, I've got a link for that down below. It's gonna get you a discount every time you order something on totalboat.com. Again, no pressure, but they're an awesome company and I truly do stand by their products. I've been using them for years.
three days, six total layers. Each color layer has 17 actual layers. So we're at 102 layers at this point. And in each layer, there's 24 pieces for a grand total, 2,448 pieces of paper. And we're halfway done. Oh, dude, my back is killing me. Just being like <laughs> leaned over this for hours. I'm building the table legs out of red oak, which I think is gonna be a nice contrasting wood for the black and blue tabletop, but I'm gonna build the legs in sort of an unusual way. Normally, I would cut the individual components and then glue all those together. This works okay, but often it's difficult to clamp everything together with odd angles and curves, and I have to make extra clamping blocks to kind of mitigate for that. So this time, I'm trying something a little different. I'm actually gonna make two large panel glue-ups, and I'll put that down on the CNC, and then I'll be able to cut out the entire leg all at once. And I get this seems like a slightly wasteful way of doing things, but if you actually stop and think about it, it's not slightly wasteful at all. With the design that I've chosen, it's extremely wasteful. So you remember how I said I never second guess my design choices? Well, I just don't feel comfortable wasting that much wood, and I really want to try this method of putting together the legs. So this redesign that I'm doing here technically isn't a second guess. It's more like a second first guess. Laying out all that paper piece by piece is really tedious, but what I haven't shown you is how difficult it can be to get the vacuum bag and the different peel layers off the following day. That bleeder fabric fills with epoxy, which then cures, and as I would pull off that layer of breeder fabric, it would start to tear into smaller pieces. I'd have to start peeling it up all over again. In the first few days, this would take me about 30 to 45 minutes just to get the paper lamination completely out of the vacuum bag and all the layers peeled off. So it's 45 minutes of a forearm workout followed by four to five hours of a back workout but lately this has been my main form of exercise so i'll take it this is the start of day four it's looking really good i will say however because of the overlaps it's gotten very wavy i think that's not going to matter in the end because i am going to carve some sort of organic pattern into the top of this the more i build it up the more i put these layers on here the more it's going to get wavy so we do this three more times and this is going to be thick enough as a matter of fact let, let me go ahead and pull it up and we'll see how thick it is. I was hoping for at least a quarter inch of thickness a day, but I'm not quite hitting that mark. And I'd like to be able to add more layers per day, but I feel like I'm maxed out on the working time of the epoxy that I'm using. So I'm gonna stick with the same 17 layers per color per day and hope that the final thickness will be at least an inch and a quarter. And as long as that works out, I should have only three more days of laminating to get to that mark. As soon as I started adding layers, I discovered we were not in good shape. Those ridges created by the overlapping edges of paper are getting exponentially taller with every layer, and this is something that I'm gonna have to address once I pull this lamination out of the mold the following day. That is, what, five days now? Getting it out of the vacuum bag and all the different layers, when we first started, that took like 30, 45 minutes each time, but that just took us about two minutes tops. However, the surface, because of all those different seams, has gotten so incredibly uneven and wavy. I'm a little worried that if we keep going, like it's gonna cause problems. So I think the move is we put this on the CNC, do a flattening pass. Let's, uh, let's pop this off the mold. I had a bit of cleanup to do on the underside where it overlapped the edge of the melamine and created this ridge. So I sanded the bottom to make sure I had a good flat surface for the flattening passes that I'm gonna do on my CNC. I'm using my big three and three quarter inch flattening bit and I had a feeling this project was gonna be interesting as the various uneven layers get flattened, but it came out way cooler than I expected. It sort of looks like a Rorschach test, which you know is one of those ink blot tests where you're supposed to tell the therapist what it looks like. So. Go right now, drop a comment right here, and tell me what you think it looks like, and I promise your responses will be completely confidential, 
only viewable to myself and everyone else who watches this video. As cool as it looks, this is gonna be the underside of the table. And honestly, I think I could have stopped here, made this the top. After flattening, I'm down to just under an inch thick. I also have this section on the end where the flattening bit went rogue on me and gouged this corner. No idea how that happened, but I figured I could just repair this with small pieces of paper stacked up in this corner. And also I'm just guesstimating how many layers I needed to repair this corner because there really is no way to know for sure. But this seemed to turn out pretty good. This is the last day of laminating, so I'm just going to jam through this section super quick. It's all the same stuff that you've seen six times now, but now that starting surface is nice and flat, and that makes the whole process quicker since I'm not having to squeegee the paper down to an uneven surface. And I'm getting more efficient, so this round only took me a bit over three hours to do versus the four to five hours that it took in previous laminations. That was a lot harder to get out of the vacuum bag and all the layers off than it was before. And I think it's because, you know, we had to laminate on what used to be the bottom. So now there's an undercut to this piece. There's like almost like a 45 degree angle and all those peel layers kind of got stuck down in there. How long are we into this now? Just paper was 21 to 22 hours. 22 hours, roughly 5,100 sheets of paper laid out individually over 22 hours over six days. But thankfully, that's the last time we have to do it. As long as it's somewhere between an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, that's over an inch and a quarter. Oh. So we're an inch and an eighth, essentially. And we wanted to finish at least an inch and a quarter. I'm not gonna be happy with that. Round seven, I, that's the right move. I'm gonna have to do another round of lamination. Dude, we'll just zoom through this. Like, I'm sure that people are sick of watching me laminating paper. So here's a quick sped up, super fast montage. And now I'm done. So I mentioned earlier that the ideal vacuum to pool is 25, but the best we had done to this point was 23. Now on the last one, we're pulling 25. So uh, we finally got it right. I took those red oak panels that I glued up earlier over to the CNC so I could carve out the final shape of the legs. Had I stuck with that ellipse design, there would have been so much wasted wood. And for a project where we're taking paper and turning it back into wood, wasting so much red oak, just it just didn't seem like the right move. I'm also adding a stretcher for some extra support and I'm carving a pattern into the side of the legs for added visual interest that I hope complements the top of the table. So we'll call that my third and fourth first guess. Okay, I just got this thing out of the uh, vacuum bag and thank goodness that I don't have to do any more lamination. Now let's take a measurement, see how thick this thing is and see if it's ready for uh, some flattening. Dude, you're not gonna believe this. We have to do another round of lamination. It's not thick enough. Nah, I'm just messing with you. We're good. We can go ahead, get this on the CNC, uh, get it flattened. And thankfully, we don't have to uh, do any more lamination. Now I'm going to put this back on the CNC and flatten it again. And it's removing most of what I did on day seven. But it gives me a final thickness just over an inch and a quarter, which is good enough for what I'm going for. Before carving the pattern into the top side, I wanted to get a final flood coat of epoxy on the underside, as this is going to be the finished bottom surface. Now, as I sand, you can see there were a bunch of little voids where I didn't quite get a perfect lamination, but overall, I'm really happy with how this is looking and how everything is working. Plus sanding and the flood coat on the bottom is gonna even out those spots and they won't be that noticeable in the finished piece. Back to working on the table legs and I need to make the pegs that are gonna hold the stretcher without the need for glue. This is something done in more traditional woodworking projects and in timber framing, but it's something that I've never tried personally. The stretcher is gonna slot through the center notch on the legs and then I've got these wedge tenons which I hammer into those notches and this is gonna sort of tighten, pull the legs together and hold the whole thing together without the need for glue. Last, I finished the table base with some Total Boat wood honey, having built our bed and a matching rocking chair out of red oak with those same vector weight patterns. I've used wood honey on both of those projects and not only is it the easiest finish to apply, it looks really good on red oak. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Also, full disclosure, red oak is not one of my favorite species of wood. I much prefer a white oak, but red oak is running about 350 a board foot right now versus white oak, which is about 12 bucks a board foot. So 
that decision becomes really easy to make. I built a table a couple years ago where I used glass as the river between two cottonwood slabs, and I got that glass cut at a place in Oklahoma City called Glazing Concepts. For this project, I sent them my 3D model file so they could custom cut the glass with holes for the glass standoffs that I'm going to be adding to the tabletop. And using glass as the tabletop is going to allow me to carve a 3D pattern into the top of the table, but then not require me to come back and fill it all up with epoxy to get a flat, usable surface again. This place has some killer machines. I wish I had some of these for myself, especially this water jet that they use to cut these custom pieces of glass. And if you're wondering, a half inch piece of glass like this, custom cut to my specs, cost me $400, which is a lot of money for just a piece of glass, but I think the finished table deserves this extra touch. And as a side note, I chose not to have tempered glass. The glass is a half inch thick. It doesn't really need to be tempered or that's what they told me. So I'm not gonna temper it, but I was nervous driving a $400 piece of glass across town to my shop. And thankfully the glass made it intact. Now I can cut the pattern on the top of the table, and for the longest time, I didn't know what the design would be. I wanted to highlight the layers and not distract from the organic look the stat paper was revealing. Earlier I showed you that spot where I had what looked like raindrops on the underside. So this inspired me to carve in a water ripple pattern, sort of like what you would see if you tossed a rock into a still pond. It's three-dimensional, it's visually interesting, and it's sort of an organic pattern found in nature, which is perfect for a table made out of paper and epoxy. I think it's going to really highlight the layers of this piece in an amazing way, so I'm really excited to do this technique. Not quite sure what's going on, but uh, this got screwed up pretty bad. I've had issues with the bit slipping on the CNC before. In order to mitigate that, I've gotten really good about cleaning all my collets and my bits, and that's what I did before I started any of this because I just didn't want to have to deal with any of that. The first pass, it went like extra deep, and then every subsequent pass, it wasn't going deep enough, no idea why, and then suddenly it started going super deep and I stopped the machine, looked at the uh, collet, and the entire thing was loose. I have to salvage this. There's no other choice but to salvage this. I consider myself a casual sports fan, but one of my favorite stories from the past few years is about Philadelphia 76ers all-star Joel Embiid. Now, you probably already know this, but he's famous for saying, trust the process. Fans have even nicknamed him The Process. And there's even a video out there that went viral, and it's of a Philly Lyft driver or cab driver, and he sees Joel Embiid out jogging through the streets of Philadelphia at midnight like he's freaking Rocky Balboa. And the cab driver gets so excited that he rolls down his window and shouts, trust the process. It's an awesome video. Check it out if you haven't seen it. We've already established you won't find me running through the streets at midnight these days, but I can take a lesson from Mr. Embiid and trust the process on this build. I reran the carving pass, and this time it came out exactly as I wanted to. The middle gouge was eliminated by the new carves, but that deep groove that it cut on the first pass still remained. So to account for this, I'm gonna cut this same groove all the way around the inside of the piece and create sort of a border for the 3D carved frame drop section that should look intentional. Last, I could run the final passes to cut out the finished profile of the table, and thankfully I had no other issues. Finally being able to pull the cutout shape off the CNC was amazing. Seeing all the layers stacked up there like that, it's exactly how I hoped it would look, maybe even better. I'm so glad that I trusted the process and that I didn't just chuck the whole thing into the dumpster like I wanted to do about an hour ago. The next step is to put a big heavy round over and that's gonna expose the layers. And then I'm gonna come back and hit it with some epoxy so that stacked paper and that 3D design really pop. I'm finishing the top with a few flood coats of Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy, and before I do that, I need to sand. The 3D surface means I need to add this foam pad to my sander, and this allows the sander to contour to the shape of the tabletop, and I'm actually impressed with how much this paper micarta cuts and sands like it's actually a piece of wood. Finally, dumping the epoxy on and spreading it around with my hands, I got to see all those colors pop and that wood grain-like pattern in the paper, and it's better than I imagined it would be. Now, I know I say that on most projects, but it really rings especially true here. This is one of the coolest things I've ever made, and I'm getting really anxious to see it finish. 
With that first flood coat fully cured, it's time to prep and pour what I'm hoping will be the final coat of epoxy. First up, I need to remove the plugs. There are also a few places where the paper from the table stuck up through that first coat. You can see those right here. And a quick sanding took care of that. It knocked them down real fast. And then I come back with some CA glue and I'm using that to fix the stainless steel glass standoffs into their final resting place. And then that next coat of epoxy is gonna actually hold those in place permanently. This project was almost a complete failure and it took so much longer than I thought. So it feels really good to be so close to the finish line and there's only a couple steps left to go. So I need to make some steel brackets so I can attach the legs and I'm building those out of this three inch wide bar of mild steel, which I'm cutting over on my grizzly metal bandsaw. I want those metal brackets recessed into the table base, which means I need to cut in four pockets on the bottom. And yeah, I know I could have done this with just a router and a straight edge, but I went with the Shaper Origin, which some people call a handheld CNC, but in reality, it's just a router with autocorrect. I program in the size and the depth of the pocket that I need and then I follow the on-screen guide while I cut out the shape and then the shaper origin automatically keeps the bit on track. Now it's not faster than just using a normal router but it's way more accurate and sort of fun to use. The bottom of the table is really scratched up from everything that I've had to do, so here I'm sanding it back up to 5,000 grit, and I specifically decided not to wet sand it, and this is because I didn't want to make a huge mess and potentially risk ruining the top. So I'm going to leave the underside of the table with more of a matte finish, and then I'm going to come back and add two coats of Rubio Monaco. This is probably more work than is necessary for the underside of a table that no one is ever going to see. But I feel like a lot of times the difference between just an okay build and a really nice build is paying attention to little details like this. I still have to put on the N3 nano finish and add the glass. This thing is essentially done. And before I ended the video, I wanted to give you an update on how many pieces of paper this actually was. So I did the math and I actually went back through and I counted all the leftover paper just so I made sure that I had an accurate count. Some layers had a piece or two extra here and there. The grand total, 5,911 pieces of paper and 15 gallons of epoxy. Uh, Johnny, I I was looking through the, uh, the drawer and I just found two more sheets of black paper. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for finding those. 5,909 sheets of paper, 15 gallons of epoxy. I, I just, just to be uh, honest with the viewers, I, I also found three sheets of blue paper. So that makes the final count on this table. 5,906 sheets of paper, 15 gallons uh, of epoxy. I mean, actually, no. We're done looking, we're done counting. 5,906 sheets of paper, time to get this thing all wrapped up. One of the main things that you gotta be concerned about with epoxy coated tables is scratches and scuff marks. So to help protect the table and add extra sheen, I'm applying this Blacktail Studio N3 Nano Finish. I know I get really excited about this stuff and I use it on every project now, but that's because there hasn't been such a game-changing advancement in woodworking finishes in a really long time. I'm not trying to do a hard sell here. You make your own choices, do your own research, but I truly am impressed with how well N3 Nano protects wood and even epoxy finishes like this. So if you're someone who builds or restores furniture, I recommend checking it out. Let's look it out here. The final step is to add the glass to the tabletop, which is held in place with these standoffs and matching cap. I vision this piece as either a small dining table or a medium sized desk. This table is, however, available for purchase on my website. I've got a link below, but there's a catch. I really don't want to ship a piece of half inch glass across the country, so I'm going to list this at a lower price point than what I normally would. I'm going to offer free local pickup or maybe even delivery to a reasonable driving distance. Side note, I've yet to figure out how far I'm willing to transport this thing, but there's a link below if you want to check it out. This table is in no way practical, but I really think it's the best piece that I've built yet. Maybe because it was such a pain in the ass to make, but I think it's a really unique and interesting piece. And if I've learned anything from this build, it's that I need to remember to trust the process because nine times out of 10 when I do, I get to have my pinata and smash it too. Also, I wanna give a big thank you to those who watched to the end of the video. If you did that comment, trust the process. In a week, I'll pick a comment at random and send you a free Johnny Builds t-shirt. Thanks for watching.